Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Nicole Capizzi. And I'm Sarah Zarnomsky. Here's your news now. Some of the best Broadway shows are coming to Philadelphia this season, thanks to the touring performances of the Kimmel Center-affiliated Broadway series. This month, the 2013-14 series begins with the Tony Award-winning show, Once, opening next Tuesday, October 29th. Tickets for Broadway Philadelphia shows range from $20 to $115 and are available online. Check www.kimmelcenter.org rush for an updated weekly listing of available shows. In the spirit of the season, this Friday, October 25th, Cabrini College's cat board transforms Woodcrest Mansion into a haunted house. Entry is only $1 towards charity. The event runs from 8 to 11 p.m. Having trouble with your coursework? The Center for Teaching and Learning, located in Idarola, offers help to any area of study. You can meet with a tutor by appointment or just walk in. The tutors are eager to help you become a better student in and out of the classroom. The men's basketball team officially started practice last week. Let's check in with Coach Khan and some of the senior Cavaliers to see how it's going. My expectations for the season are the same as what they've been every year, and that is really especially at this point in the year, just getting better every day and expect to, um, you know, fulfill our potential and, and work hard every day in practice and kind of figure out who our guys will be and, what, and get our chemistry worked out before we move forward. So our seniors this year with Corey Frazera, John Miller, and Fran Rafferty will be our, um, our second recruiting class to come in, but have been here through it all. I mean, they, they've... Um, have had a lot of success but it's come from a lot of hard work and they really are the foundation that's that's put our program to where it is now they've all played a major role in our success that we've had over the last couple of years been a lot of running changing my diet eating right um working out over the summer uh just trying to stay focused for this year this year is really, it means a lot to me i uh, worked out ran and got a lot of shots up to prepare me for the uh, preseason that we're going through right now it's rough, but um, we got it, around 30 guys trying out, so we've been running, and that's pretty much all we've been doing. Conditioning is always key. Uh, we like to get up and down the floor. That's like kind of our style of play. So we've been running, uh, playing open gym every day, and we've had a new like lifting program that we've been on this year. Um, it's really helped us out. In our, within the conference, um, our biggest challenge will probably again be Keystone. They've been the biggest competitor of ours the last couple of years, and um, they do a great job there, and, and they play similar style to us, so it's always a good, a good, a good match. Um, we've struggled playing at their place, which always makes it difficult, um, but we've, we've uh, you know, the last two years played them in the championship game and won, and I, I would expect that it probably would come down to the two of us again this year. Um, you know, beyond that, I think, even within our non-conference schedule, St. Mary's is currently ranked number two in the country. We play them our second game of the year. Once you, you know, once you get into the NCAA tournament, you could play, as we found last year, you could play some very good teams early on and uh, be challenged. So we wanted to set up our non-conference schedule to be as tough as possible. First game is in November against Eastern, and it's at their place. And uh, that's always the most fun game of the season. So, and it's even better that it's the first game. So, my second game is going to be the, the real, the real test to see where we're at. First game, I'm pretty sure they're gonna give us a good run, but second game against uh, St. Mary's, that's 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 gonna be that's gonna be live. That's gonna be real good. Always a big game. First game is always a big game. Always playing Eastern is a big game, uh, so it should be a lot of fun. It'll be there's no we usually play them mid year, so it's kind of you can build up to that. Um, this year will be a little different going over there for our first game, and uh, we'll get tested early, which is a very good thing for us. So last year we've been we've been in this program. This is our fourth year in. I mean. He came, he came here through, through uh, Coach Khan. He recruited us, so we're like, we're like his first recruits in a way. So I think it means, like it, it just means a little bit more to the program-wise. It's kind of like a now or never mentality. Like, I mean, for us and my fellow seniors, it really is now or never. Um, it's our time. This is our time to do something big for the school, and we're gonna go at it all, all for us. That was your trip around the block. So Kevin. What's up with Nick Foles? Well, after a pretty rough week for Nick Foles, the Eagles quarterback controversy is in full swing again. So let's take a look. Is there more quarterback controversy brewing for the Eagles? 
Nick Foles struggled in the Eagles' 17-3 loss to the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday and suffered a concussion in the fourth quarter, leading to Matt Barkley's NFL debut. At 3-4, the Eagles are likely to start Michael Vick again after he sat out two straight games with a hamstring injury. What do you think about the Eagles' quarterback controversy? Is the quarterback of the future currently on the roster or in next year's NFL draft? Tweet us your thoughts at Location News. Cabrini's men's and women's soccer teams both scored key victories on Saturday. The men's team claimed a 2-1 win over Baptist Bible College, while the women's team picked up a 2-0 victory over Centenary College. Field hockey also tallied an important win on Saturday, defeating Newman University 4-1 to retain the top spot in the CSAC standings. The Flyers' early season woes continued in a 4-1 loss to the Pittsburgh Penguins last Thursday. Following a week off, the Flyers returned to the ice on Thursday night against the New York Rangers, just three days after Captain Claude Giroux proclaimed the Flyers would make the playoffs. The Flyers, currently at 1-7-0 on the season, have three games remaining in October. Tune in next week for highlights from the Eagles' Week 8 game against the New York Giants, as well as an update on Cabrini Sports. Now here's Sarah with your trip across the nation. On October 21st, Sparks Middle School in Sparks, Nevada gained a hero. A middle school student opened fire, wounding two boys and killing a teacher, and then killing himself. The teacher, who was also a former U.S. Marine, was said to be protecting his students when the young student fired at him. According to CBS News, it is still uncertain what the motive was for the shooting. The Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. is now facing a $65 million budget cut that was approved by Congress. In the past year, the museum had already trimmed its budget, but because of the shutdown, it has now time to reconsider the budget or temporarily close down some of the museums. Online dating has become the new way of meeting people. According to CNN, 6 out of 10 Americans say that dating sites are a great way to meet new people. Social networking sites have played a big role in the, in in the increase, especially in romantic relationships. Online dating has become a common way to mingle. Do you want to have a leg up and when it comes to finding a new job? Learn how LinkedIn and having an online resume can help you stand out. Over the past couple of weeks, Cabrini faculty has run two different workshops for online portfolios, creating websites, and professional social media. These tools will help with marketing yourself to future employers. While LinkedIn is also individualized, the things that you can do to it are mostly the same. Um, your resume is kind of mostly based on your experience, as is your LinkedIn account, but the features of LinkedIn and why it's good to use are all the same. And so I feel like reaching a group of students um, on a larger level, a larger scale, is easier to do with LinkedIn rather than with resumes. I completely agree with having uh, my own portfolio on hand when I go to interviews, but it also look great having an online portfolio. So I thought doing a WordPress site would beat me over the other competitors in the field. LinkedIn is important because it can help you get a job. Um, it can help you connect with the world around you, stay up to date on things after you graduate. Uh, professional things, personal things, things you're interested in. Um, it's also a really great way to bring your name to the top of a Google search. You know, I want at least a way to, uh, at least to create a way to display my portfolio, you know, uh, all the stuff that I've done here, you know, over the past couple of years. So it's something where, you know, I think a website's a unique and kind of, uh, kind of an easier way to do that. So it's, you know, kind of, it's also something where, you know, like I, I'm interested in website development, you know, it's something I would like to try to get into, you know, down the road. So. This is definitely a good way to start. Uh, right now I'm pursuing uh, maybe social media, public relations, advertising, marketing, something along those lines. In order to have my internship grade, I had to have a WordPress account. So now's the time to start blogging for my internship and my future career. These workshops will be ran again at a later date. If you wish to find out more information, contact Jerry Zurich or Melissa Moravec. And that was your trip across the nation. So what's going on in entertainment this week? Well, Kim Kardashian just got engaged again, so let's take a look. Looks like Kim Kardashian is on the road to marriage again. Kanye West popped the question to the reality star on her 33rd birthday, Monday, October 21st at the AT&T Baseball Park in San Francisco. Insiders announced close friends and family were there to experience the romantic proposal. Of course, Kanye West spared no expense when it came to asking Kim Kardashian's hand in marriage. With a 15 karat diamond ring, a personalized message on the scoreboard that read, Please marry me, and a 50-piece orchestra, 
Can you imagine what the wedding would be like? Tweet us your thoughts at Location News. Jersey Shore star Polly D is now a father to a baby girl. On Tuesday, Polly D confirmed the news to TMZ. Although the name of his former fling has not been revealed, Polly D is ready to take responsibility for his newborn child who was born just a few months ago. Looks like Snooki San Lorenzo will have a new playmate. With Halloween just around the corner, this news should be exciting. Sources say that Tim Burton has received an offer from Warner Brothers to direct a sequel to his 1988 hit movie, Beetlejuice. Could the rumors be true? Let's hope so. That was your weekly entertainment update. Now let's check in with your Nicole with your news around the world. A band of wildfires nearly 1,000 miles long coursed through Australia this week, and firefighters fear the worst is yet to come. When high temperatures, low humidity, and strong winds were forecast, fire officials urged residents to evacuate from the path of the fires. At least one death has been reported, a 63-year-old man who died of a suspected heart attack Friday while defending his home against the blaze. Australian officials are looking into whether one major blaze was caused by a military training exercise. French President Francois Hollande discussed reports of the U.S. spying on French citizens in a Monday phone call with U.S. President Barack Obama. A statement from Hollande's office said he expressed deep disapproval of these practices, which are unacceptable between friends and allies because they infringe on the privacy of French citizens. The White House said that some of the allegations of U.S. activities carried in the French press were distorted. However, the two leaders have agreed to work together to determine the facts and the exact scope of the surveillance activities revealed by the French newspaper. The U.S. economy added 148,000 jobs in September, which is lower than analysts had predicted. The unemployment rate fell to 7.2 percent down from 7.3 percent in August, the U.S. Department of Labor said. The release of the figures was delayed by the partial shutdown of the U.S. government earlier this month. Thanks for catching up with us this week. For Location Weekly News, I'm Nicole Capizzi. And I'm Sarah Zarnomsky. Make sure you stay up to date with us throughout the week by following our social media platforms. Simply search Location News. Have a wonderful week, Cabrini.